Hello, my name is Liliana Felix. I am a student at Aspen University. I'm going to be doing a TED Talk style presentation about new grad nurses in the ICU. So I'm going to begin by summarizing the clinical problem and available research. New grad nurses who are assigned to work in the ICU may face several challenges that can result in clinical problems. This is because the ICU is complex and demanding and working there requires specialized knowledge, skills, and experience. New grad nurses may lack this experience and knowledge needed to manage critically ill patients and may struggle to make quick and effective decisions in a high pressure situation. They may also have limited knowledge of the equipment or procedures used in the ICU, which can result in errors or delays in treatment. Additionally, they may experience high levels of stress and anxiety when working in the ICU, which can lead to burnout and decreased job satisfaction. Overall, the presence of new grad nurses in the ICU can be a clinical problem if they're not adequately trained, supported, and supervised. Proper orientation and training programs are crucial, as well as ongoing mentorship and support from experienced nurses and other members of the healthcare team. This can all help to mitigate these challenges and improve patient outcomes. So how I intend to operationalize the practice change in my selected practice environment I think that hospitals can take several steps to help new grad nurses become prepared to work in the ICU. Some of these steps may include structured organization and training programs. Um, these programs should cover topics such as critical care, assessment and management, use of specialized equipment, communication with the healthcare team, and coping with stress and burnout. Additionally, clinical mentorship is another thing that can be implemented. This would include pairing new grad nurses with experienced nurses who can provide ongoing clinical mentorship and help to build that confidence and improving clinical competence for the new grad nurse. Clinical mentorship can also include regular check-ins, shadowing opportunities, and debriefing after critical events. Another effective method is stimulated, stimulated learning experiences. I know I have found these to be very helpful in nursing school. So this is when hospitals provide new grad nurses with stimulated learning experiences that mimic real world ICU scenarios. This can help them to develop critical thinking skills, practice communication and collaboration with the healthcare team, as well as becoming familiar with the equipment and procedures used in the ICU. Lastly, it's important to implement a supportive work environment. So hospitals can provide an environment that promotes teamwork, open communication, and emphasizes the culture of safety. Then the theor theoretical model that I will use and how I will overcome barriers to implementation. The model I selected is Benner's novice to expert model, and this model proposes that nurses go through five stages of skill acquisition from novice to expert. So new grad nurses begin in the ICU as a novice or in the beginner stage, and then they progress through. Um, and the model suggests that they need structured guidance and mentorship to progress effectively. Some of, there are several barriers that may be encountered in order to implement Benner's um, novice to expert model and effectively train ICE, uh, new grad nurses in the ICU. So some of those barriers may be resistance to change. Resistance to change is a common barrier in healthcare organizations. And in order to overcome this, it is important to communicate the benefits of having these mentorship programs, these extensive um, trainings for new grad nurses, and explain how it will improve patient outcomes in the nursing practice. Another barrier may be limited resources, so such as funding for education and training programs or time for mentorship and coaching. To overcome this, hospitals can seek funding opportunities or explore partnerships with academic institutions or nursing organizations to support the implementation of these trainings and of the Benner's um, model. Inadequate staffing levels are also, it can also be a barrier. To overcome this, hospitals can explore innovative staffing models that allow for dedicated mentorship time or provide opportunities for experienced nurses to work in a preceptor or mentorship role. Another barrier is lack of leadership support. Um, 
So in order to overcome this, it's important to engage with hospital leadership and communicate the benefits of training for new grad nurses, um, providing leadership training on the importance of mentorship and investing in the professional development of nursing can also help to build support. And then lastly, the another barrier is time constraints. This is a really big one. Um, time constraints can make it challenging to provide new grad nurses with the necessary mentorship and support. Sometimes um, new grad nurses only have a specific orientation period and then they have to be prepared to go on their own and to overcome this hospitals can explore innovative scheduling models that allow for dedicated mentorship time such as scheduling mentorship sessions during low patient volumes or using technology to facilitate virtual mentorship sessions and just making sure that before the nurse goes off on their own that they do feel fully comfortable obviously it's not going to be perfect but they should um, feel like they have the necessary resources and support to um, be able to handle patients on their own. What sources of internal evidence will I use in providing data that demonstrate improvement in outcomes? So some of the sources can be um, electronic health records, though they contain a wealth of data that can be used to evaluate outcomes. This includes information on patient demographic diagnoses, treatments, and outcomes, and hospitals can use this data to track changes in outcomes over time. And we will be looking at um, mortality rates, infection rates, and readmission rates. Quality improvement initiatives. Ho hospitals can also use quality improvement initiatives such as plan, to st plan, do, study, act cycles or learn Six Sigma to evaluate the effectiveness of interventions. Another method that can be used is patient satisfaction surveys. They can help to provide valuable insight into the effectiveness of the interventions. And then staff feedback is also a big one. Hospitals can gather feedback from nurses, physicians, and other healthcare providers to assess the perceptions of the intervention and identify areas of improvement. And then cost data can also be used to evaluate the cost effectiveness of interventions. Are there any ethical considerations there are several ethical considerations that should be taken into account when researching the preparedness of new grad nurses in the ICU. Um, some of these ethical considerations would be to make sure that you have informed consent from the participants. So if you were to be doing a survey or an interview um, type of research, you would make sure that the participants in the research provide consent. And then confidentiality is also very important. Patients' identities and personal information should be kept confidential to protect their privacy. Fairness and respect is another huge one. Participants should be treated with fairness and respect. They should not be coerced or forced to participate in the study and should also be informed of the potential benefits and drawbacks. Um, they should also be informed of any potential harm so researchers should take measures to minimize any potential harm or discomfort that may be caused to the participants. And lastly, conflict of interest. Researchers should disclose any potential conflicts of interest that may affect the research. So in order, uh, it's, it's important to understand how to evaluate outcomes from the change project. So to evaluate outcomes from the change project, it's important to identify clear and measurable goals that align with the project's objectives. So some steps that can be taken to evaluate the outcomes would be to identify the outcomes to be measured. In this case, it would be the preparedness of new grad nurses in the ICU. Um, establishing a baseline would be the next step. Um, establishing this baseline for the outcomes that you wanna measure will help to compare pre and post intervention data and determine whether your change project has had a positive impact. So this can be done by developing a survey or questionnaire to gather data on the skills and knowledge new grad nurses possess before they start working in the ICU and then compare it with the skills and knowledge they have after working in the ICU for a certain period of time. The next step is data collection. So the researcher would collect data on the outcomes that are to be measured, and this may involve collecting data from electronic health records, surveys, or other sources. So as I stated, like surveys can be used, or in qualitative research, 
an in-depth interview with new grad nurses working in the ICU. Nurse managers and preceptors um, can also be used to gather their perceptions of the preparedness of new grad nurses. The next step is to analyze the data and determine whether the change project has had a positive impact on the outcomes that you want to measure. So after implementing these mentorships and making sure that there's adequate training, those, simu those um, simulations, all of those have been implemented, then you can analyze the data and then compare it to the baseline data. So after implementing those measures, then you could go back and compare it to the baseline and see if there's been significant improvement. And the final step is just to reflect on those results and determine whether the change project was successful in achieving its objectives. And how will I disseminate the findings for my change project? So basically, how will I share those findings? This can be done in several different ways. Um, this can be done by publishing in a peer-reviewed journal, at a conference, um, developing a summary for the lay audience. And another big one nowadays is the use of social media. So I would likely use social media and share my information at, at conferences. I feel like going and presenting information or the use of social media is another very powerful tool that can be used. So that is how I would share my results. Um, lastly, in conclusion, new grad nurses who are starting their career in the ICU face numerous challenges, including a steep learning curve and high stress environment. Hospitals can play a crucial role in helping to better prepare these nurses by implementing evidence-based strategies and providing them with the necessary support and resources. Some potential interventions include structured orientation pro programs, preceptorship models, simulation-based training, and ongoing professional development opportunities. By taking these steps, hospitals can help to ensure that new grad nurses are adequately prepared to provide safe and effective care in the ICU, ultimately improving patient outcomes and improving the overall success of their healthcare organizations. Thank you for your time.